Let's start first and foremost with Netflix making headlines last week, not just rolling out some new shows, but 190 countries? Yeah, big news. Already? Netflix stole the show. How did they do this? I mean, yeah, they they were really ramping up their international expansion. I mean, you go back to like the middle of 2015, uh, Reed Hastings and, and company there, they had basically announced that their aggressive international expansion trajectory would look like them entering a total of 200 countries essentially by the start of 2017. And uh, dur- during the- Netflix knows how to put on a show. So during uh, you know their keynote address Wednesday morning at CES, uh, to wrap that up, Reed Hastings says, "And now we're turned on in 130 more countries." So that that brings Netflix to 190 countries as of this week. So uh, certainly accelerating their international expansion more than I think anyone would have expected. This is a company you know well. You're there with Matt Argersinger, Brendan Matthews. This is. Uh... A, a room full of uh, a room full of people who are, I'm assuming, are not easily wowed. People who are used to listening to company executives talk. Mm-hmm. Was this a jaw dropping moment? Like I, I just imagine you guys. I mean, were you guys stunned when he said that? I know we were, and I think from. I, with the Motley Fool, we have a unique perspective from most people there in terms of the press and the other um, analysts who are there because we're looking at it from an investing perspective. So, uh, certainly for us, it was a jaw dropping moment. I think all of us were pretty stunned. Like, wow, this is this is a big moment for for Netflix and for the entertainment industry because Netflix is now in a position that no other company is in, especially. Because because you have to remember, at the same time that Netflix is expanding internationally, they're also rolling out their original programming, their original content. So now Netflix can do something that no one else on the planet in terms of in the media space can do that cuz as soon as they release, you know, an original show like season 4 of House of Cards in March, it's going to be available around the world uh, instantaneously at the same time. So there's not going to be with their original content, there's not going to be any of this is like, well, it'll be available in the US in March, it'll be available in Australia in July, it'll be available in New Zealand next year. It'll all be available at the same time. So just something as seemingly simple as that, I think, is actually pretty revolutionary for the space. So it'll, it'll, it, th- this announcement really changes a lot for Netflix and the industry as a whole. And I think we've talked about this before. One of the things that's easy to miss with Netflix, and I don't think Netflix is alone in this regard, but I think they are the leader in this regard, and it is the data that they have access to being able to analyze what their viewers are doing, what they're watching, not just so that they can serve up additional programming and say, oh, well, if you like this, then here are five other shows or movies you might like along those same lines, but even going so far as to be able to use that data to plan launches. I was listening to an interview recently with Bill Burr, who's a stand-up comedian I like Mm -hmm. a great deal, and he has a new animated series on Netflix called F is for Family. And one of the things he talked about in the in uh, this interview I was listening to was not just the guidance that he got from Netflix in terms of how to shape the show because I had just assumed Netflix was good at identifying people and others are good at this as well. I think uh, John Langraff at FX is very good at this. I think HBO is certainly very good at this at identifying creative people and saying we want to work with you. What is your creative vision for a show or a movie, etc. But beyond that. He talked about how Netflix provided a great deal of guidance in shaping the show in terms of story ideas, in terms of what direction they wanted him to really push it in, but also in terms of, here's when we want to launch this show. Mm -hmm. I know you're thinking of maybe doing it early in the year. We think it's going to set up really nicely for you if we do, and and they have the data to back it up. Yeah, Netflix is really just mastering all, all the different angles here. They're mastering the storytelling angle, working with uh, the storytellers, the creators, the producers. Then, I mean, the distribution and, and that timing angle, and, and especially now that they're available, I mean, essentially worldwide, and a few countries like China and North Korea, they're still not in. Uh, that, that puts Netflix in a powerful position. And I think it also gives them an advantage. If you are, you know, a, a storyteller, a producer, you're going to want to work with Netflix because uh, they they have, as you mentioned, that data. They have a, a global distribution platform, unlike no no one else in the world comes close to what Netflix has now. That that Netflix is available worldwide. So, naturally, if you're a storyteller, you're going to want to work with Netflix, especially if you have an idea for, 
you know, a TV show or mini miniseries, especially compared to traditional broadcasting, where you know, if you're a producer, you get one pilot and you, you test the pilot. It's one on one night. You see how that works, and that determines whether or not you you have a show or it gets nixed. With Netflix, you have the uh, storytelling and creative flexibility to have you know a ten episode story arc, which is also unique, and it's released all at once worldwide. So, if you're a storyteller, or a content creator, you know that's it's a Netflix has a really solid value proposition. So I think they're just going to keep continuing to to attract talent to them. One more question on Netflix, and then we'll move on because I know there was a lot of other stuff at CES. There was a press availability with Reed Hastings and his team. You got a chance to ask him a question. What'd you ask, and what was his reaction? I so Reed Hastings. You can tell that he 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 knows he's a big shot now, and he he's in high demand. So not his first rodeo. Yeah, yeah, and and he I I think he would prefer Wall Street doesn't <laughs> engage with the company so much or you know get in the company's way. He just wants to do his thing. Uh, so you I know just, what? If, if he feels that strongly, he should take his company private. That's right. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, a he, solution he still that. has to deal with us, you know. Um, yeah, so my question was just the the company has obviously accelerated their international expansion. Like they, no one expected this announcement to come now. Like the, as I mentioned before, their aggressive plan was to have to be at this level by the end of 2016 or start of 2017. So I just asked, you know, does that accelerated international expansion does that change the company's trajectory in terms of breaking even internationally? Does it change our financial guidance at all? And you could tell he he wasn't very enamored with the the question. He was like, no, it doesn't change our financial guidance. That was it, no color or anything. So he he wasn't a huge fan of the question, but I think you know it, it was still a question worth asking, especially from the investing perspective, because the company's rolling out a lot faster than anyone anticipated internationally. But at this point, it doesn't look like um, that changes their financial guidance at all. But to, to me, that's why, and this is just me, but to me, that's the number one reason to listen to a company's conference call. Yeah. Yes, you sometimes get more information, but just getting a sense of how do the executives react to questions, particularly when times aren't going well. Not that that's the case with Netflix right mm -hmm. now, but I, I'm always curious to see how they react. 